Hi there, in this video I'm going to be going through the three kinds of ionising radiation and looking at their ionisation ability and their penetration. To do this we're going to use a piece of equipment called a Geiger-Muller tube. So this is the Geiger-Muller tube here and the ionising radiation enters here and it's detected. So this is our ionising radiation detector. That's then connected to the Geiger counter and each time it detects a ionising radiation particle then the number on the screen goes up. So now something interesting to point out is it's going up even though I haven't even though that we've got no radiation sources nearby. So we're not testing any at the moment, but the number's still going up. The reason for that is uh, it's because of the background radiation. So background radiation comes from sources such as cosmic rays, the rocks and soil around us. There's a gas called radon in the air that emits ionizing radiation. Also nuclear test sites emit a lot of ionizing radiation. Radioactive waste from nuclear power stations emits ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation is often used in medical uh, medical physics uh, so that's a source of background radiation as well so this is radiation that is around us all the time what we're going to look at is the three different kinds of ionizing radiation now something really important to stress here is that we're going to be using ionizing radiation and there's risks uh, to our health so ionizing radiation can damage the DNA for example and it can lead to cancer. So throughout this, I'm going to be using some forceps to handle the ionizing, the radioactive sources, uh, because I'm going to try and minimize my exposure. First kind that we're going to look at is the properties of the alpha particles. Now, the alpha particles consist of a, a particle that's made up of two protons and two neutrons. And what I'm just clamping down here is just a small cylinder that's emitting alpha and alpha particles. So it's emitting lots of little particles that consist of two protons and two neutrons. And we're going to keep an eye on the Geiger counter as we move it a little bit closer and we're going to see how what effect it has. And something that should be that we should be able to see is that the Geiger counter is now going crazy. It's counting, 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 loads and loads and loads. But as we move it away, the amount gets smaller. And when it gets to about two or three centimeters, then it's pretty much stopped completely. That's because even though the alpha particles are very highly ionizing, they're not very good at penetrating. Another way that we can show it's not very good at penetrating is if we move it closer again. So there we go, it's going nuts but we can stop that, stop those particles being detected by just getting a piece of paper and just sliding a bit of paper in between. And then our count, it's still going, but it has gone down quite noticeably. So paper stops I, uh, alpha particles. When we take paper away, it goes nuts again. So that's the first kind of ionizing radiation. Uh, well, uh, radioactive, oh yeah, ionizing radiation, and it's called alpha particles. Next one, called beta particles. So a beta particle, it consists of a high energy electron, and this high energy electron is emitted from the nucleus of the atom. And we just clamp that down, and uh, move it closer, then when it's really, really close, it's detecting loads and loads and loads of uh, those beta particles. As we move it away, so we have to go a good maybe 10 centimeters away before it starts dropping away appreciably. So it's still relatively uh, high count, or we're still detecting some. You have to go a good 15 centimeters away. The uh, reason for that is because beta particles are a lot more penetrating than alpha particles. So alpha particles can penetrate about maybe 2 or 3 centimetres in air. Beta particles can penetrate about 15 centimetres in air. So if we move it up close again, then we're going to test to see another example of its penetration. And we're going to use some aluminium sheet and pick up our aluminium foil 
And we've got a thin piece of aluminium here. And pop that in front of it. And not an awful lot happens. Let's just test that paper as well. So paper doesn't seem to stop it. Alpha particles were stopped by paper. But the beta particles are getting through the paper and the aluminium. Let's try a slightly thicker piece of aluminium now. So we've got our thicker piece of aluminium. And it's only thicker aluminium that stops beta particles. So again, that shows that they're far more ionising than the alpha particles. Let's put the beta particles away now. And the final one that we need to uh, discuss is gamma rays. Now, gamma rays are high energy photons. So they're not a particle, but they're photons. So part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And we're going to demonstrate this using a, using a compound called thorium nitrate. So we're going to use some thorium nitrate. And if we pop that just in front of our Geiger Muller tube there, and we'll move it nice and close. So, as you can see, detecting loads and loads of uh, gamma rays coming out there. If we move it further away, then it's starting to drop off, but it's still not going down to zero. So it's still producing quite a lot of gamma rays there. Let's just test its penetration, because the gamma rays are the most penetrating. So you should find the paper has very little cap effect on reducing the count. Aluminium has very little effect of reducing the count. Let's try the thicker aluminium. Still hasn't reduced the count. What we're going to try now is we've got some lead some lead uh, discs, and I'm just going to go straight into the uh, biggest one, and I'm just going to have to nudge it back slightly. And even with a piece of lead in there, a really thick piece of lead, still not stopping it. Let's just leave that there. Let's try, let's try another piece of lead. And it's gone down a bit, but it hasn't gone down completely. So it just goes to show the penetrating ability of gamma rays. Now, the trade-off with penetration and ionisation is if something's really penetrating, then it means it's not very ionising, and vice versa. If it's very penetrating, then it's not very ionising. I'll put this on a little summary page at the end. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And any questions or any feedback, just drop me a comment and I'll be happy to respond to it.